Death can be painful enough to deal with on its own, but a murder can compound the suffering for the family. For some, years and years without answers guarantees that the wounds caused by this hardship never heal. Sometimes, detective work is a waiting game, for breakthroughs in technology or that one witness to come forward who can crack the case wide open. Unfortunately for these 10 people, life was cut short and their families were left with questions that went unanswered for years. Here are 10 cold cases solved after decades. 10. Virginia Freeman. On August 11, 1999, a man named James Otto Erhardt was executed. Erhardt had kidnapped and murdered a nine-year-old girl by the name of Candy Kirtland, from Bryan, Texas. Cut back to December 1, 1981, when a woman named Virginia Freeman, who was working as a real estate agent at the time, received a call from a man claiming to be interested in buying a home. The man was none other than James Otto Erhardt. Her heart beat and stabbed her repeatedly before finally strangling her to death, leaving her corpse in the still-locked house. The crime scene was thoroughly investigated, and skin samples were taken from underneath the fingernails of Virginia Freeman, but at the time, DNA testing was not an option. Erhardt sat on death row and refused to give a DNA sample all the way up until his execution. With no further evidence to go on, the Virginia Freeman case remained cold. Then, in 2018, investigators decided to unearth the body of James Otto Erhardt, and a warrant was granted for the exhumation. The bone fragments of Erhardt were tested against the skin under the fingernails of Freeman found at the crime scene, and a murder was solved after nearly four decades, thanks to DNA evidence and the exhumation of a cold-blooded killer. 9. The Crystal Blainowich Murder One of the most modern, most sensitive forensic tools helped solve the cold case of a teenager found bludgeoned to death by the side of the Provo River in Utah in 1995. The victim was 17-year-old Crystal Blainowich. Next to her, police found the murder weapon, a bloodstained rock. They tried to recover DNA from it, but 90s technology yielded no usable results. In 2013, investigators analyzed the same rock again, using a modern tool called the MVAC. It is a wet vacuum collection system used to collect the smallest traces of DNA. It was used on the side of the stone opposite the bloodstain, most likely the part gripped by the killer. Even after 18 years, the MVAC collected 21 nanograms of genetic material, which was more than enough for a DNA profile. The new evidence quickly pointed to a former airport shuttle driver named Joseph Michael Simpson. His DNA was already in the system as he had previously served jail time for another murder. In 2016, Simpson was convicted of Blaine Owich's murder and sentenced to life without parole. 8. The Lake City Torso Murder More than 25 years ago, the dismembered body of a young man was discovered behind a gas station in Lake City, Florida. Several items related to the murder were also present at the scene, including a blood-soaked flannel shirt, a mattress cover, bathtub safety pads, and bloody knives that were most likely the murder weapons. Despite having DNA from the killer and the victim, both remained unidentified for decades. This changed in 2015 when modern tests and an updated DNA database finally identified the victim as 16-year-old Fred Laster. His family confirmed that Laster disappeared in 1994, shortly before the discovery of his mutilated body. Once police knew the identity of the victim, they established a short list of suspects. On that list was Ronnie Leon Hyde, a former youth pastor who was a friend of the family. According to Laster's sister, Hyde was the last person to see Fred alive, and he changed his story several times during the initial investigation into Fred's disappearance in 1994. With this information, police obtained a DNA sample from Hyde and matched it to DNA from the flannel shirt left at the crime scene. Also, considering that a car similar to Hyde's Chevy Camaro was seen leaving the gas station, the 60-year-old former pastor was arrested and is now awaiting trial. Since his arrest, Hyde has also been charged with child pornography charges and another cold case murder from Jacksonville, Florida. 7. Kylie Mabry A young Australian girl named Kylie Mabry had been sent out by her mother to buy sugar, but she never returned home. The six-year-old's body was discovered the next day abandoned in a gutter. She had been raped and murdered. 33 years passed, and suspects were investigated. But none panned out. Until the police decided to re-interview a man named Gregory Keith Davis. He was a suspect early in the case, but no evidence was found to prove his guilt. During his re-interview, however, he agreed to have a DNA sample taken. His DNA was a match for that found on Kylie's body. Davis was charged and later pleaded guilty. 6. The Saturday Night Fever Killer In 1982, 17-year-old Dianuya Yanni was raped and murdered in her North London home, shortly after seen talking to a young man in his 20s on her doorstep. 
Police found physical evidence at the scene, including semen on the bedspread, but lacked the technology to test it. It was not until 1999 that they were finally able to extract a usable sample, but, even then, they turned up no matches. Finally, in 2016, police caught a break when a new search found a match, 56-year-old James Warnock. He had been entered into the system after being forced to give a DNA sample following a charge of possessing indecent images of children. At the time of the murder, Warnock lived about half a mile from the victim. He described himself as tall, thin, with dark hairstyle to look like Saturday Night Fever era John Travolta. This matched descriptions that were given by neighbors of the man seen talking to Yanni. When presented with the DNA evidence, Warnock claimed he was in a sexual relationship with the victim. The jury did not buy it and found him guilty of rape and murder. 5. Freddy Farah Freddy Farah was a father of four and worked at a grocery store that he owned. On May 22, 1974, a man walked into the store, brought some items over to the counter for checkout, pulled a gun, and demanded money. Freddy was startled and swiped at the gun. The gunman shot Freddy, causing the wounds from which he would later die. After 43 years, the case was finally solved with the arrest of Johnny Lewis Miller. He had been working as a street performer in New Orleans for the previous 20 years. He was just 17 years old when he murdered Freddy Farah. Miller had left fingerprints on the counter. Due to improvements in the automated fingerprint identification system, he was positively identified as the killer and arrested. 4. The 50-year-old cold case. Since 2007, New Jersey State Police have been using the Applied Biosystems AMP Fister Identifiler Amplification Kit. Basically, the kit uses a process called polymerase chain reaction, to amplify a DNA selection many times over so that a usable sample can be retrieved, even from the smallest sources. In early 2016, this technique was used to put to rest one of the Garden State's oldest unsolved cases, the 50-year-old murder of Mary Agnes Klinsky. Klinsky was just a teenager in 1965 when her body was found after she was raped and beaten to death. There were no solid leads at the time, but police kept the biological evidence in proper storage, waiting for the right tool that could put it to good use. Eventually, investigators were able to show that Mary Klinsky had been a victim of infamous New Jersey serial killer Robert Zerinsky. Zerinsky died in 2008 while serving jail time on two other murder charges. According to the established timeline, Klinsky might have been his first victim, but Zerinsky has long been suspected of up to 10 homicides. Police are hopeful the new forensic tool will help to solve other long-standing cold cases. 3. Lisa Zeger Lisa Zeger was working as a teacher's aide during the day and at a gift shop at night in spring 1992. One night, Lisa seemingly vanished from the gift shop. When her body was found days later, it was determined that she had been raped and stabbed to death. In the days leading up to her disappearance, Lisa had told her friends and family that she felt like she was being watched. The community of Springfield, Massachusetts, was devastated by her loss. After 25 years, police had gone through multiple means of investigating. But none had been fruitful until a breakthrough in forensics technology allowed a male DNA profile to be built using evidence from the crime scene. Using this tech, they were able to predict what the perpetrator might look like and compare that to the suspects. One man stood out, Gary Iscara. In late 2017, he was arrested in connection with Lisa Zegert's killing. 2. The Cornell Story Murders Since the rise of DNA evidence, one of the most ambitious projects in the United States was the establishment of a national database, the Combined DNA Index System, CODIS. It ensures that DNA samples of new criminals are checked against past DNA profiles of unidentified criminals collected at crime scenes and logged into the database. On several occasions, this has helped investigators find new leads in decades-old murders that would have, otherwise, likely gone unsolved forever. That was the case in 2016 when Joseph Ziller of North Fort Myers, Florida, was arrested for shooting his son with a pellet gun and charged with aggravated assault. When his DNA profile was uploaded to CODIS, it matched a sample taken from an unsolved double murder from 27 years ago. In 1990, the city of Cape Coral, Florida, was rocked when 32-year-old Lisa Story was killed inside her home alongside her roommate's 11-year-old daughter Robin Cornell. This was not the first time detectives tried to close the case using modern forensics. 1. Jenny Zatricki During the 1990s, the heyday of the serial killer was still very much alive, and a string of rapes and homicides took place across several states. In April 1990, the killing spree began with the murder of Jenny Zitricki in her residence at Hidden Lakes Apartments, in Greenville, South Carolina. Her killer had managed to pry open her sliding glass door and gain entry. 
He raped her and then strangled her. Her case wouldn't be solved and would fall into the cold case files for many years to come. The murderer, Robert Brashers, went on to commit a string of murders and sexual assaults afterward and would eventually end up killing himself in a standoff with the police by a single self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head in 1999. As the years went by and DNA technology got better and better, it became apparent to authorities that the body of Robert Brashers would need to be exhumed. In September 2018, they did so and conducted thorough DNA testing on the 19-year-old corpse. They found that the DNA was a match to the scene of the murder of Jenny Zittricki. After 28 years, Jenny Zittricki's murder was finally solved. And this is where we end this video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel, so you don't miss out on my future videos.